Hello, Bethel Community Church. This is the devotion for Wednesday, September 9th. And I've been looking at Profiles and Courage. I've been looking in the Old Testament. Today, I'm gonna look at the New Testament, a very famous passage of Peter walking on the water. And so the passage comes from Matthew 14, verse 22 to 31. Matthew 14, verse 22 to 31. Now, so just some background is this is right after Jesus had finished feeding the 5,000, that was 5,000 men, as well as women and children. There were a lot of people there, if we would have included women and children, more than 5,000. Before that, if you look in the passage, he had wanted to, to be alone to grieve and to pray after hearing about the death of John the Baptist. As you went to verse 13 of Matthew 14, you'd see where he was emotionally when he was confronted by a hungry mob and wants and desires to meet their need and interact with them. So with that background, it says, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray, which is really what he wanted to do even before he saw the hungry, hungry group that was there. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. Which is pretty impressive. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Very interesting response. He says, you're walking on the water. I wanna do that. Can you help me do that? Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water. Think of that first step, that first faith step of actually stepping on something when you know you're supposed to sink and you don't. So he got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, the very thing Jesus told him not to be, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. It's always a good response. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Now, there's four points I want to look at this, but I, I always think it's interesting when Jesus says, you have little faith. I think Peter had amazing faith. He believed that Jesus commanded him he could walk on the water. I don't see the other disciples doing that. And yet Jesus pointed out that he had little faith when he began to sink. But first, I want to look at that Peter believed that Jesus could command him to walk on the water. Now, Peter often gets a bad rap. He has foot and mouth disease as, as much as any disciple we see and, and more so. But his faith really was amazing. When you see obstacles, do you immediately believe that Jesus is greater than the obstacle? Peter believed that Jesus was greater than the obstacle. He believed that he could walk on water. He believed he could defy gravity, if you will, if Jesus gave him the command to do so. And so we need to understand that whatever obstacles are there, whatever is there, if we keep our eyes on Jesus, he is greater than that obstacle. Second, Peter was doing great so long as he kept his eyes on Jesus. He was not afraid when he kept his eyes on Jesus. He was not full of doubt when he kept his eyes on Jesus. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, we'll also be less inclined to be afraid of all the craziness, all the chaos that is taking place around us, especially right now. We can keep our courage by trusting in Jesus and trusting his promises. After all, Jesus had promised Peter that he could walk on the water, and he did. He will call us to some amazing actions as well, so long as we trust him and trust his promises. And again, Peter is the only human besides Jesus who walked on the water. Jesus has some wonderful things in store for you, but we need to trust in his promises and keep our eyes fixed squarely on him and not the wind and the waves or the chaos in our culture, whatever we would relate to wind and waves in our culture today. Third, he got into trouble when he took his eyes off Jesus and began to look at the circumstances around him. This is when per fear permeates our hearts. When we look at the things happening in our culture, we look at riots and we look at the disease that's, that, that's affecting all of life right now and our response to the disease and schools not opening or whatever it might be. When we look at those things, we look at an election year and what's coming up and we think about what could happen if someone's elected or not elected, 
we can begin to lose our focus um, pretty easily. Um, and we need to remember that our hope isn't based on somebody who might be elected. Our hope is based on Jesus. So we don't want to let circumstances that are around us diminish our view of Jesus and what he can do. No matter what happens around us, he is still in control and we need to look to him and not to look away from, from him, not look to something else. We need to keep our eyes squarely on Jesus. Pretty basic, but also very important. Finally, notice how Jesus responds to Peter's cry. I love this response. Peter cried out, save me. And isn't it, you know, Jesus didn't come back and said, oh, well, you have so little faith, you know, I'm just going to let you sink for a while. He, he, he didn't do that. Um, he didn't say, you know, well, you took your eyes off of me. It was your choice, so I guess you're going to have to deal with the consequences. What I love about what Jesus did in the passage says immediately, immediately, that Jesus caught him and saved him. Peter's faith wasn't completely gone when he saw the wind and the waves. It was a reminder when he began to sink that he needed Jesus. I think we can relate to that. I can relate to that. How many times I'm following Jesus and all of a sudden I get my eyes off of him because of something that happens. And when I begin to sink is when I remember, I need Jesus. And I love Jesus' response because it's basically, yes, you do. Don't forget it. And you do notice that Jesus did immediately save. It's a good thing to keep in mind with all the chaos that's happening around us. Keep our eyes on Jesus. There will be times when you will probably fail. There will be times when I have failed to keep my eyes on Jesus. But when we begin to sink, we need to remember he's still our Savior, and he always will be. Uh, Father, I thank you for the truth that we can trust your promises. We can trust the promises given to us in your word through your son, as well as through the prophets. And Father, we can trust you in the chaos and the uncertainty of the culture around us. We can keep our eyes focused and fixed upon your son, Jesus. Help us to do that, Lord. And especially in times when perhaps we fail, I pray that early on in that process, you would remind us that of where our focus needs to be and that the Savior is still Jesus and that we'd be putting our faith and our trust squarely where it needs to be. Thank you for your provision. Let us all be found trusting in you afresh. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching. God bless.